welcome, my friends, as we gather for this time of worship. It is great to be able to come together t with you uh, through the internet um, as we uh, come together for worship, whether you're worshiping uh, when it's first uploaded, whether it's uh, later on the Saturday or the Sunday or throughout the week or any other time that you come back to this uh, worship service. It is great to be able to just come and to gather together and praise God, to hear his word and to allow God's Holy Spirit to be, renew us through this time of worship. So I invite us to turn our attention uh, to the responsive reading, which comes from Psalm 119, verses 33 to 40. I will lead with the uh, slides marked the L, with the L, and if you'd follow along, we'll all do together the slides marked with the A. Sorry. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from the looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your rules are good. Behold, I long for your precepts and your righteousness. Give me life. Uh, my friends, I invite us to join our voices together as we sing, uh, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. And this is one of my uh, favorite hymns. It is a hymn that I was, um, uh, I was treated to at a friend's induction service, and it has been very close to my heart uh, ever since that time. So let us join together as we sing, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. truly great to be able to sing God's praises and to be able to uh, know that no matter where we go, uh, he comes after us. He loves us and his love for us never fails. So as we have sung his praises, let us also bow our hearts to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you. We thank you for the wonders of your grace. We thank you for the beauty of your love 
We thank you for the wonder of the world around us. Lord, in each thing we see the creativity and the love that you have poured in to each, each part of creation, that you have woven everything together in your majesty. You have created a wonderful picture of life that breathes and that sings and that glorifies you. Lord, as we come into your holy presence, we are humbled by your greatness, by your love, by your grace. Lord, we also made v- clearly aware of, of the problems that we have caused. We are aware of how our hearts have, have been led astray by sin, how we have allowed hatred and, and fear to dictate how we live. Lord, too often we forget about seeking your will, about following your gifts, about following your words, about how they are to guide each and every day of our lives. Lord, we forget to trust in your Holy Spirit and we rely on our own strength. We rely on our own understanding. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to trust you with all that we are, with all that you have given us and with all that you have called us to be. Lord, we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And God is gracious. God is forgiving. God hears our prayers. He hears the confessions of our hearts and of our, of our minds. He knows what is deep down inside of us. And he still shows his grace and his love to us. This is the grace and the beauty of the gospel. I invite us to turn our attention or I invite us to join together in prayer as we uh, say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our mission moment this morning is entitled World Literacy Day. In Afghanistan, cultural norms dictate that men often play a more central role in public life, while women and girls have more significant roles in the homes. Because of this, many girls do not have equal access to education. Presbyterian World Service and Development with the support of local partners, has been uh, working to provide girls with access to high-quality education. Through summer camps, girls are informed about human rights, gender, sex, and leadership and democracy. Sadaf and Nargi participated in this summer camp, where they were inspired and excited about the great things they could achieve in the future. For the two girls, access to fair and equal education is vital for their goals and dreams. It is also essential to allow their communities to flourish. So this is, this is one way that our gifts to world service and development uh, help to change lives around the world. At uh, this time, I invite us to uh, join together as we sing, Oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus. And there are songs the, that... Um, uh, have many different meanings for us. This is a song that actually uh, really stuck with me through uh, this uh, time of, of, of the pandemic and is a song that I've sung uh, many times in the last few months. So I invite us to join together as we sing, Oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus. Vast, unmeasured, boundless, free Rolling as a mighty ocean In its fullness over me Underneath me, 
All around me is a current of thy love leading onward, leading homeward to my glorious rest above. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus spread his praise shore to shore. How he loveth, ever loveth, changeth never, never more. How he watches o'er his loved ones die to call them all his own. How for them he intercedeth, watcheth over them from the throne. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, love of every love the best. Tis in ocean vast a blessing, tis a haven sweet of rest. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, tis a heaven to me. And it lifts me up to glory, for it lifts me up to for our Sunday school time and today we're going to be talking a little bit about forgiveness and for some forgiveness is very easy uh, for others it's a little bit harder um, and I've got a video that I'm going to show us it's uh, looking at uh, things that people have said to other people and they write it on a chalkboard and then well you'll have to wait and see what happens so I'll invite us to uh, li watch and listen to the video She said I was mean. She made fun of how I look. He stole something from me. She lied about me. She said I was being a baby. He cut in front of me in line. He pushed me down. He said I was annoying. She talked about me behind my back. She left me out. He made fun of my family. She told on me. She invited everyone but me. He said I'm not his friend. She said she didn't like me anymore. He called me a loser. She hurt my feelings. He lied about me. She said I was dumb. She said I was mean. He called me a wimp. He didn't he made fun of how I looked. He told he me no one likes me. me. She lied he about said she didn't want to be friends anymore. He said he hated me. But you know what? I forgave him. I forgave him. I forgave her. I forgave him. I forgave her. I forgave her. I forgave him. I forgave her. I forgave her. I forgave him. I forgave her. I forgave him. I forgave her. I forgave him. I forgave him. I forgave her. If you forgive others, you will be forgiven.
So my friends, as we heard from the video, there's a lot of things that we can say to each other that are hard and that are hurtful. And there's other things that some people would think, well, that's just nothing. Why are you even worried about it? And there's some people that that hurts right in the heart. And they, it's, it sticks with them. So we have to be very careful about uh, what we say and what we do. But it's also important to forgive. Now, forgiveness isn't just about uh, the other person. It's also about ourselves. It's about having that strength to get past this point, uh, to get past what has been said, what has been done, um, and to be free from that moment so that those words won't have the same effect on us. Um, hopefully, we can put that behind us. Uh, and it's allowing uh, God's grace to transform us but also allowing God's grace to transform others. So my friends, I invite us, no matter what happens in our lives, to work towards forgiveness. It doesn't mean that things are going to go back to the way they were. It doesn't mean that, we, that everything is going to be uh, exactly the same as it was. It means that we will have to grow and that things will change. Um, things might be better. Things might be different also. But that's part of what it means to uh, journey with God in faith. So let us uh, come before the Lord in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for the opportunities that you give us to forgive and to be forgiven. Lord, it is hard. Uh, forgiveness isn't easy. It is a work in progress. It is something that we struggle with. It is something that uh, it changes us. But Lord, we know that you are faithful to walk with us through these times. Lord, help us. Free us from the uncertainty. Free us from the problems that we face. That we might know your, your grace, your mercy, your love. That we might be able to share that with others. That we would grow as people. That we would become the people that you have, have called us to be. And Lord, we lift up to you people in our lives that, that, we've, that we need to forgive. We lift up situations in our lives that, are, that we're struggling with right now. Lord, be with us through these times. Help us, Lord, to speak your truth in love, to be gracious as you have been gracious to us. And Lord, we also lift up to you those who are hurting. We lift up to you those who have gone through surgery. And Lord, we pray for your uh, for your healing on them, for those who are going through treatments for cancer, Lord. We pray for strengthening of bodies, of souls, of minds, of hearts. Lord, we pray for families and friends who have had to walk through times of grieving, through times of hurt, and through times of pain, Lord. Lord, we pray for rest. We pray for renewal. We pray for strength through these difficult times. Lord, we, we pray for strength. We pray for healing. We pray for renewal through these difficult times. Lord, we pray that you would be with our leaders, Lord, as they make decisions about, about school, about the country, about our communities, Lord. Lord, we pray for the doctors and the nurses who continue to, to serve and for parents and children as they are preparing for parents and children as they are preparing to go back to school, Lord. Uh, to send their children back to school and for, and for the many plans that still need to be made and for the uncertainty that is going through a lot of people's minds right now. Lord, we pray for your protection. We pray for opportunities to learn and to grow and to adapt. We thank you that you walk with us through these times, through the uncertainty, through the anxieties that we face in our lives. Lord, we pray for, for our friends around the world, for the ones we know and for the ones we don't. Lord, we pray for your, for your grace and for your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would guide them through the difficult paths ahead, that they would know your faithfulness and trust you, even when the way seems dark, when the way seems hard and the mountain seems unsurmountable. 
Lord, you have promised to bring the mountains down and to bring the valleys up, that we would walk on even ground. Lord, as we turn to your word, guide us in your truth, in your life, in your hope. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 to 11, uh, and from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 14, and from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. So you son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. And if I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn away from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity. But you will have delivered your soul. And you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus have you said, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we rot away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live, turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? And from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 18 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly in the daytime, not in orgies or in drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. He refuses, if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything, They ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. We're on a new message series called What's Next. And as we go through uh, the last six months um, and wondering what's next, it's a question that kept coming up to my mind. And as I'm actually going through the uh, lectionary right now, it's a little bit different. I know uh, for myself, I'm more traditionally on the uh, message series, uh, but still looking at the, uh, at the lectionary and how it leads us through Scripture. And uh, it's been very helpful these uh, past few months um, with all the other things that have been going on. Uh, so it's been good to be able to just to, to look at, at what's next in, uh, in the scriptures. And today we're looking at, um, at a topic that many of us uh, value, but we also struggle with. And when it comes down to it, as we talked a little bit about it earlier, uh, it comes down to, are you willing to forgive? But forgiveness has a greater uh, context uh, within the scriptures than we, when we fully realize. 
And the question that comes down to is, what does it take for you to listen? And we think about this, so forgiveness, but there is this aspect of listening that we have to be able to embrace. That listening in itself uh, opens us up to what God is doing, to God's truth, to God's grace, to God's love. But it also opens us up into wider community. So when we look at the scripture readings from today, from Ezekiel, uh, from Romans, and from uh, the Gospel Matthew, there is a, a topic of forgiveness, of repentance. But the greater topic that underlies all of this is, a, is the concept of community and what it means to be in community. Now, Ezekiel uh, is a prophet. He's a prophet from the Old Testament. He was a prophet that was sent uh, to a particular people in a particular time, warning the people about, uh, about their sinfulness, but also that if they didn't turn away, if they didn't turn back to God, they would be invaded and their lives would be changed considerably. God, in the passage that we just read from, uh, talks about uh, Ezekiel being a watchman, someone who uh, shares the word of God, someone who uh, listens, for God's to speak, listens for God to speak into his life, to warn the people. And he has a very specific responsibility, as, a, as the scripture says, that he is to warn the people. He is to not be afraid to share God's word, He's not to be afraid of sharing God's word, of calling people back to a right relationship of God. And if he refuses to say what God has said, uh, given him the words to speak, then he is going to be held partially responsible. But if he speaks and people choose not to listen, and there we go again with that listening part. But if he speaks and people choose not to listen, He's done everything he can. He cannot force people to listen. And we might think that this is a harsh, harsh scripture, and it's a, it's a hard scripture for us. But when we look further down into the scripture, um, while it's a message of warning to Ezekiel himself, it's also a message of hope. Hope for Ezekiel, but also hope for the people. In, in verse 11, it says, As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live. This is a message of life. This is a message of hope. This is a message of God's forgiveness, of God's grace, that he is giving us the chance to turn back to him. And this message continues on uh, through the scripture readings. Paul is warning and inviting people to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, uh, when questioned, what is the greatest commandment? He responds to the question, correctly I might add, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And depending on the translation you use, some would expand it as much as I just did. Some would say, love the Lord your God with all of your being. Everything that involves being you. And then he continues on, and the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And this comes straight out of the Ten Commandments. If we look at the first uh, section of the Ten Commandments, uh, it's talking directly about how to uh, love and honor God. The last part is how to live in community to how to live and be in a right relationship with other people around you. And, it's, and it starts off right from the very beginning of life. Honor your father and mother. And then there's a promise that goes with it. And there is a promise that goes with that commandment. And, we, and it goes on. Uh, do not commit adultery. Do not lie. Do not murder. Uh, do not covet. All of these things help us to be in a right relationship with each other. It also helps us to be in a right relationship with God. 
The law is not separate. We sometimes want to want to separate the law from the law from what God has uh, shown us in Jesus Christ, and yet law by itself uh, can lead people into sin because then they start to know when they've sinned and we start to think along those sinful lines. But the law is a guide for us to know how to have a right relationship with God, a right relationship with those around us. At the heart of it is the love of God that it shines through through Jesus Christ. We, We want to throw out the law But the law is actually a guide for us to know what it means to truly love God, to truly love your neighbor, to truly have a right relationship and have a life that is honoring and glorifying to our Heavenly Father who has redeemed us. Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew teaches us how to love when it is difficult. Let's be honest, when it comes to forgiveness, some of us struggle with it because some of the hurt has been really bad. And when there are problems in our lives, how do we deal with those problems? And he he does a step-by-step instruction. Uh, We usually miss the first step. Admit that there is a problem. We have to admit that there is a problem, that there's something that we need to deal with, that we need to ask for forgiveness or... uh, or, inv- or invite someone into uh, the process of rec- reconciliation because they have hurt us. It's about having that strength and the courage uh, to move forward. The second step is go to the person one-on-one. Talk to them. Instead of going and gossiping about it, going and causing other problems, go and talk. Try to reconcile. Try to deal with the problem at the very beginning. The other problem that we have is that we, we don't admit that there's a problem and then we add on to those problems and it grows. And then we get to the point where we're so ticked off that that next step is very difficult because we've allowed the first step to balloon out of uh, bigger than it needs to be. So go and talk to the person one-on-one. Try to work things out. Now, if that doesn't work, Jesus says, go uh, bring one or two other people. Uh, and, and it's uh, important that they're trustworthy. They're important that they're honor, honorable people. Um, because part of what this is, is recon- recognizing that uh, the testimony of one person, um, you need to have more than one person in, the, in a court of law uh, to uh, concur Uh, with what's been happening, uh, to acknowledge what's been happening. So you bring another person along with you, so that's two people. Uh, Bring two, uh, that's three, and it's not to be overbearing, but to help uh, bring, uh, help to bring clarity and to keep things honest. So it's not just one person's against another, but there is uh, a clear process that is being laid out uh, to make sure that everything is above board, that there's no lying going on, uh, no one's t- trying to take advantage of another person. So it's it, the importance of, of them being trustworthy and honorable people. And if that doesn't work, it's, it says bring it to the church. Um, bring the elders in. Uh, wise people who bring wise counsel. And try and deal out with it there. And if that doesn't work, then you treat them like Gentile or sinner and tax collector. Now, people love this line because it it feels like we're, we're, we're off the hook then. We don't have to deal with it. We're just gone. And I have to admit, I was one of those people. And then I was challenged. And then I was challenged to think, so what did Jesus do with sinners and tax collectors? What did Jesus do with those sinners and tax collectors? He talked with them. He treated them with respect. He even went and ate with them. He shared the good news with them. Now imagine that, not off the hook, but it is a little bit of a different relationship. They're not forgotten about. 
It's just they, you approach it in a different manner. You still share the love of God with them. You do not push them out uh, entirely. But the relationship definitely changes. And the reality of all of this comes down to uh, building community where there is no fear. If we can deal with the problems one-on-one, there is a sign that there's no fear there, that we can respect each other, that we can talk it out, that we can deal with what's going on. And if that doesn't work, you know you have someone else that you can rely on to help you through it. See, again, we, we've, we've gotten into a habit of, the, of individuality, and yet the gospel speaks of gracious community of creating that gracious community where there is no fear. A community built on trust, on God's love, on grace and forgiveness. A community built on the life of Jesus Christ. It is a community built on trust, on God's love, grace and forgiveness. A community that is built on the life of Jesus Christ. That Christ is at the center of who we are and what we are doing. That it's not about our own whims and our own fascinations. But it is a a community where Christ is at the center and everyone around is equal. Because we are all called by Jesus. We are all called and redeemed by His grace and His love through His life, through His death, and through His resurrection. We are called by Him who has redeemed us. We're not the one making the community. He is the one calling us into community. And we sometimes forget about that. In this community, we have the presence of Jesus where two or three are gathered. It is not based on our arithmetic. It is not based on on great numbers. It is based on the work of the Holy Spirit uh, living in us, calling us together. And it is at Christ's leading that we are are made as a church. It could be two or three, it could be two or three hundred, two or three thousand, two or three million, where two or three are gathered. Christ is there. And we hear about the importance of forgiveness because what is bound on earth, what is unforgiven on earth, is unforgiven in heaven. That the forgiveness that we practice in this world, in this time, has an eternal effect on all of us. That it's not just about me forgiving right this instance. It is about how I am affecting my own eternity and the eternity of someone else. That is a huge responsibility. But we have to remember that God is the one who has given us, he is the one who has shown it to us through Jesus Christ. He has shown us what a community that is self-giving as Christ gave himself for us. Are we willing to be self-giving? Are we willing to trust in Christ in community? Are we willing to trust in the people around us To live without fear. To share in the love of Christ together. And to move forward together. This is the picture of God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. This is an eternal beauty of these scriptures bringing us together. That it is an eternal truth. It is what we see as the community that God is developing on earth as it is in heaven. Are we willing to live that out? Are we willing to trust in the Holy Spirit to lead us through these things? To be as Ezekiel uh, and sharing what God has laid on our hearts. To be as Paul reminded us of Jesus' words, to love your neighbor as yourself. To be willing to practice community. To be willing to practice forgiveness and grace. This is a beautiful picture of heaven on earth and we all get to be part of it so let us come before the lord in prayer let us pray gracious and merciful god we thank you 
We thank you for the gift of grace that you have shown us. We thank you for the forgiveness that has changed our lives. And Lord, we pray that we would be willing to enter into that same forgiveness, to share that forgiveness with others, to be able to be part of your community of faith, to be, to be part of the community that you are calling us into, to shine for the world, to give an example of your will being done on earth as it is in heaven, to give an example of what it means to be part of the family of God, to share your kingdom in our community, to share your community throughout the world. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I invite us, my friends, to uh, join together in singing a hymn that has been uh, one of my favorite for, favorites for years, uh, Be Thou My Vision. May we have the eyes to see as Christ has, uh, sees the world. May we trust in God that it's not just our own works, but the works of God leading us forward. It is God's grace that calls us. It is God's love that redeems us. In Jesus Christ, so may we sing together, Be Thou My Vision. So my friends, it has been an honor to worship with you this morning or this weekend at this time. So may we go in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, to do the work that God has given us, to be part of his community, to be part of, of the grace and the mercy and the love that he shines in this world. May we go forth to share his blessings. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I invite us to join our voices together as we sing uh, Go in Love.
It has been an honor to worship with you at this time, and may God's blessing go with you and guide you today. Until next time, my friends, be at peace with Christ. Be at peace with the world. May you find peace in your heart and in your mind. Until next time, amen.